Christian Broadcast Ministries presents CBM Worship. We invite you to worship with us as we praise and worship our Lord together through music, prayer, and God's Word. We bring you CBM Worship from the Sanctuary of the Wayside Temple, 3809 Maple Avenue in Castalia, Ohio. We pray you'll be blessed and encouraged as we worship our Lord together.
displayed on a criminal's cross in darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost but then Jesus arose with our freedom in hand that's when death was arrested in my Give the Lord another hand clap. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, it's funny how the devil tries to trouble you. Even in the house of God, he tries to trouble you. Trying to tell you, now don't you be praising the Lord today. You know, he tried to just tell me that right over there. And I'm thinking, are you kidding me? Excuse me while I just have this out with the devil. Praise your name, Jesus. Is that all right? Now, I might not be able to preach after raising my voice like that. But I thought I'd just get that out of the way. I'm not going to be ashamed to praise the Lord Jesus. I'm not going to be ashamed to praise Him in front of you. I'm not going to be ashamed to praise Him in front of a watching world. We're here to exalt that name. Praise the Lord. He has set us free. We have eternal life. We're headed towards home. We're traveling towards home today. Praise the Lord. We've got every reason to raise our voice in thanksgiving and praise. You're not ashamed of him today, are you? Come on. That's right. Let's praise him together as we worship. Father, we thank you for loving us. We thank you, Father, for our salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, the gift of your Son has provided for our salvation. We thank you, Father, for his precious blood. We thank you, Father, for the redeeming power of his work on the cross. We thank you, Father, that the grave is empty and because our Savior lives, we too shall live. Praise your name. Lord, we've already passed from death unto life, all because of the Savior. Lord, we praise his name today. Lord, we wanna tell the whole world that we love the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, we want all men and women and boys and girls to come to the foot of the cross, come to that place of repentance where they too confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart that Jesus Christ, your son, died for them, was buried and rose from the dead for their salvation. And there they too receive your cleansing, your forgiveness and your salvation. Praise your name. Bless this service today, Lord. Lift our hearts, encourage our spirits, Lord, just bless your people. This Thanksgiving season, Lord, we have much to be thankful for. Teach our hearts to praise you. Teach us to rejoice in the Lord our God. And Father, will not fail to give you all the glory, all the honor, and will not fail to bring you our thanksgiving in the sweet name of Jesus. We ask and pray, amen and amen. Welcome someone near you with a good smile, minimum, 
and perhaps a good handshake if you desire that kind of thing. Uh, I love to get with God's people. You're in the right place today. And those of you at home that are able to tune in and participate in this live service, we're so glad you can join us. And we want you to fill apart. We can't see you, but uh, we're glad you can see us. Amen. And we're glad you can worship and give your attention to the Lord for just a little while. And I pray the Spirit of God will visit that room where you're at today. And I pray He'll lift your heart and encourage you. And perhaps if some of you that are tuning by today don't know the joy of salvation, maybe we pray you're in a season where you're seeking the Lord and you have a desire to understand how to be saved. Let the Lord work with your heart today. You know, somebody carried the gospel to me. Aren't you glad somebody brought the gospel to you? And it's our great privilege to proclaim the word of God, uh, the word of the truth of the gospel, declare it to many beyond these walls. And we're so glad that we can bring you the good news that uh, though you're lost, you can be saved. Amen. And uh, God's grace is sufficient to cover all your sin. And he has uh, a new life for you. That's right. He's got a brand new. It's more than just a new start. Heard a brother preaching the other day. He said, God didn't just give me a new start. He gave me a new heart. Amen. Well, that results in a new start. But God's got something uh, mighty to do in your life today, friend. He'll give you a brand new heart. Cry out to him. I know he'll do it. Remember our call to prayer on Sunday evenings. We are praying for our families. We're praying for our church. We're praying for our nation. And we will continue to intercede for our nation. We are in a great struggle. And uh, one election cycle, I'm afraid, friends, it might take a whole generation. If we have a generation that's willing to stand and be counted and fight the battle for righteousness and truth, then in time, the darkness will be exposed and corruption will be pushed back. But it can't just all happen in one day, one week, one year. It might take a whole generation. But I'm going to tell you something. If there's not enough people to stand for the truth in America, then the nation that we have known will fade and it will be no more. I mean, the, G, the, G, <laughs> the physical location will be here. America is not going nowhere physically, uh, at least not for now. But uh, what kind of nation will we be in a generation? You know, I'm not discouraged. I'm standing for the truth. How about you? And we're going to keep pointing our people to the living God. And we're going to keep standing for righteousness no matter the cost. And we're trusting God to give us grace to preserve freedom. Keep praying for your nation. Uh, now, just uh, one week from Wednesday, we'll be having our special annual Thanksgiving Eve service. Um, I um, hope you'll bear with me, but I, I feel some responsibility. Look, we can't let Thanksgiving just become another secular holiday either. I mean, everything that uh, is supposed to honor the Lord, somehow it becomes something else than what it was originally intended. Thanksgiving is not just a four-day shopping weekend or whatever else you make of it. Uh, we have a lot of things that are good to enjoy in their own right, but when they displace God, we've got a problem. And that becomes the issue. Now, we don't worship on Thanksgiving Day. Many, many years ago in America, that was the case. Churches actually gathered on Thanksgiving Day. Very few do that today in this time, but many families gather together. And that's wonderful. And you can worship God, give thanks, celebrate family and encourage one another as needed. But uh, how about on Thanksgiving Eve? You know, let's gather in the house of God. Make it a point. Bring your family. And get your Thanksgiving celebration started the right way. I hope you'll look forward to it. Our team's coming. And as they do so, I'll remind you that as we leave service today, as you've grown in the grace of giving, we'll be worshiping the Lord in our tithe and offering. We count it a joy to give to the Lord. And I just want to say this as well. So you think a lot of times the pastor's got it made or something. I don't know what you think. But Satan fights me when I'm standing here in the pulpit. And this is one thing, Brother Ron, he tries to trouble me with all the time, telling me, you know, you shouldn't be talking about that offering every week. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, we worship the Lord in our giving. We don't put pressure on you to meet a certain standard. We don't tell you how to do it. Really not even telling you when to do it. Don't know your circumstances. But I don't walk on eggshells. Haven't been doing it any time in my ministry, and I won't be starting now. 
We honor the Lord in our giving each week as he grows us in the grace of giving. Is that okay? Amen. Amen. <coughs> Thank you. 
Open your Bible to the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verse 1. And I'm reading verses 1 through 23 with a focus on verses 12 through 14 when we find our way there. As you turn there, just in way of introduction, I remind you today, of course, that we live in a fallen world, a world troubled by sin and death. Our experience in this troubled world is always, it's always a mixture of joy and sorrows. We have plenty of joys, but we have sorrow too. That's our experience, this side of eternity. Perhaps it's easier to give thanks while living on the mountaintop of blessing. I suppose we can relate to that. But the Bible teaches us to give thanks in everything. While temporal blessings can sometimes fade for a season, we are taught to give thanks during those seasons. Now listen well. Did everybody hear what I just said? Temporal blessings. We have plenty of food and clothing, perhaps today. But what if the season was more difficult tomorrow? Uh, perhaps uh, you have the joy of fellowship with family today. But tomorrow that can change because some graduate to heaven and we're in a different season. See, temporal blessings can sometimes fade, uh, but we're taught to give thanks during those seasons. Interestingly enough, the Old Testament prophet Habakkuk, whom we rarely quote in sermons, I think Brother Habakkuk in heaven says amen every time somebody quotes him, because a lot of Christians don't even know he exists, uh, but he's there, Old Testament prophet. But he gives us a powerful insight on the character of thanksgiving. Listen to the prophet who said, Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. During difficult seasons in life, we must turn our focus upon the spiritual blessings that we possess in Christ. Surely the prophet had that in mind, because while the temporal blessings that perhaps he had enjoyed before and perhaps would come back later, but he was in a season where he said, you know, we're having some problems here, but I, I, I got to say, I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Why? Because we need to focus on what we possess in the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, what we possess in Christ is the well from which a thankful heart draws its praise and thanksgiving. We should be most thankful for the spiritual blessings we possess in Christ. I'm very thankful for many good things this side of eternity. But I'm well aware of the fact that tomorrow things can change in this temporal world. But what I possess in Christ can never change and will never pass away. We would be wise to dwell upon those blessings and let them fill us to overflowing with thanksgiving to God. Let's look at our text. I'll read it, then we'll pray and go from there. Verse one, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus <clears throat> and of the love which ye have to all the saints. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is coming to you as it is in all the world. Isn't that an amazing statement? And bringeth forth fruit, amen, as it doeth also in you since the day ye heard of it and knew the grace of God in truth. As ye also learned of Ephaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the spirit. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you 
and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us <clears throat> from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created, amen, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him, Jesus the Christ, should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. Amen. But now, uh, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Praise the Lord. Now let's pray for a moment, shall we? Father, we thank you for the reading of your precious holy word today. And Lord, there's so much in these verses. I just pray you will bless it to our hearts. Lord, feed us, and just, just hearing that word, it speaks to us today. Father, teach us to be a thankful people indeed, and help us, Lord, to give thanks to the Father. Lord, we have great reason to be a thankful people. Write it on our heart, and Lord, help us to, well, regardless of the season that we find ourselves in today, help us, Lord, to find that place to worship you, to give you thanks, and Lord, to remember and never lose sight of what we possess in Christ. Praise your holy name. Father, we thank you right now for the victory we have in Jesus. It's in his name we ask and pray. Amen. All right. <clears throat> you will notice from verse 3, the apostle gave thanks upon learning of the faith that the Colossians had in the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul did not establish this particular local church. Rather, some of his co-laborers in the gospel established the church at Colossae. As far as we know, the Apostle Paul was never in Colossae. If he was, he just passed through, but he certainly was not there to establish the church, but he learned of their faith. As he continues his opening remarks to the Colossians, Paul not only gave thanks for their faith, and the love they had toward the saints, but he gave thanks for the hope which is laid up for all believers in heaven. Now, I just want to pause there for a moment. You need, when you're reading the Bible, sometimes just to stop and meditate on what's being said to you. Do you notice what that verse says? It says, your hope is laid up in heaven. Now, that's Bible today, and that's where my hope is laid up. Believers possess heaven in promise as they travel through this life, but we do possess it. You say, but I don't have it in my possession. Yeah, but it's yours in promise. I'm not waiting to receive eternal life. I have eternal life. I'm already in the kingdom of God, as we'll see here in a moment, but I possess an inheritance in heaven. I just haven't 
in reality possessed it yet. Now, this is important for you to comprehend. In promise, you possess heaven today. If you understand what I just said, say amen. You have it in promise as you travel through this life. Bible, Bible hope, listen to me, Bible hope is the reality we will one day move into our inheritance in heaven. It is ours now. However, we are still traveling toward home. Our hope is laid up in heaven because all our real possessions are located there. One day, what we possess in promise will be ours in reality. One day, our faith will become sight as the lights of home come into view. This is what happens when fellow believers depart this walk of life. Brother Harold went home to be with the Lord recently. Brother Bill Pounders went home to be with the Lord recently. And we've had a number of dear saints. Sister Lily Ellis went home to be with the Lord recently. Earlier this year, we've had others. Every church in our community is conducting funerals. You don't hear of all of them. You can't participate in all of them. But this pastor is not the only one preaching funerals. Day by day, every day, people are crossing the river. They're leaving one by one in our community, down in Lorain County, down Ottawa County, over to Kalamazoo County, across this country, around the world. People are leaving. They tell me that approximately 170,000 people leave this walk of life every day. That's around the world. Leaving. For the believer, when we depart this life, what we have possessed in promise becomes ours in reality. Ooh, think about that. Well, following reference to his prayers for the Colossians as detailed in verses 9 through 11, the apostle turns his attention to the giving of thanks. So look again at verses 12, 13, and 14 with me, where he says, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet or suitable, fit to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. There are five spiritual blessings found in these verses for which we should continually give thanks. You see, he's teaching the believer here, the Holy Spirit is. Uh, he's concerned about their temporal walk. He wants them growing in the Lord, so he's praying to that end. But then he turns the emphasis to giving thanks, and he says, giving thanks unto the Father. What for? And then he gives us five spiritual blessings. First of all, we give thanks to the Father because he has made us fit subjects for his heaven. Verse 12 says that he hath made us meet or fit to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. The point of this language uh, is that God has granted us the privilege of partaking in heaven, in his heaven. We had to be made fit for his heaven. This privilege is by virtue of our position in Christ. Our fitness to stand in the light of God's presence and live in the light of his glory depends solely on um, our position in Christ. See, our character, it doesn't depend upon our character or our growth in grace. Aren't you glad you're growing in the Lord? Come on. Aren't you glad you've learned how to walk worthy of the Lord in some measure? Aren't you glad that you're still abounding more and more? Aren't you glad for the sanctifying work of the Word of God in your heart and life? Uh, thank God for all of that growth, but you're not saved by virtue of that growth. You're saved by the merits of Christ alone. God has made us fit subjects for his heaven by virtue of the redeeming work of the Lord Jesus. The word of God says, but as many as received him, received Christ. To them, the Father gives the power, that is the privilege or the right to become the sons of God, even to them that believe upon his name. Are you trusting Christ today as your Savior? Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word. Listen, I've been living this way ever since I met the Savior. And as I learned and came to a better understanding of my salvation as a teenager, young adult, now down through these years. But look, I'm trusting Jesus Christ as my Savior. 
I preach it this way all the time, and I mean it. Jesus isn't part of our hope. He is all of our hope. I'm not going to heaven because I've trusted Christ and I'm doing. Stop. I'm going to heaven because I'm trusting Jesus Christ. I'm going to heaven on his merit, not mine. We give thanks to the Father who has lavished his grace upon unworthy subjects, granting us the privilege to be partakers of eternal life. A privilege granted, not earned. God has qualified us for his heaven based upon the merits of his dear son. All those who receive Christ as their savior are granted the right to be partakers of the glories of God's heaven. He has made us fit. He has prepared us for, for his heaven by providing a spotless wedding garment um, that is pure and holy and righteous. Those who attempt to enter without the wedding garment are disqualified and cannot enter in. My friends, the wedding garment of which I speak, as you well know, represents the righteousness of Christ himself. Church, we should greatly rejoice in the Lord and our souls should be joyful in our God, for he has clothed us. Praise his name. He has clothed us with the garments of salvation. He has covered us with a robe of righteousness and made us fit subjects for his heaven. Ooh, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet, suitable to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Now, if you'll stop and meditate on such things and let the truth of it grip your heart, and actually embrace it, come to understand it, you know, that's going to stir, turn some joy, joy down in your heart, Brother Dan. I mean, I am dressed up and ready for his heaven. Amen. Brother Clayton, dressed up, we're ready for God's heaven. And when I get to thinking about that, the next thing I, I want to do is just start lifting my hand and saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Praise your holy name. Next, we should give thanks to the Father because he delivered us from the power of darkness. Well, praise the Lord. Spiritually speaking, until an individual receives Christ as Lord and Savior, he is a part of the kingdom of Satan. Now, that might be hard for some to comprehend. It might even seem awkward or strange to some people. But biblically, it's right on target. Regardless of how educated one might be, regardless of how cultured or sophisticated one might be, Regardless of the status one may have in this world, until one receives Christ as Lord and Savior, he is walking according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, and according to the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. In a word, spiritually speaking, such individuals are of their father, the devil. Maybe that seems awkward to say it that way. Jesus did. Uh, Jesus once said to a very religious, sophisticated crowd who thought of themselves as the children of God. They went about to establish their own righteousness, as Paul said it later, and they were ignorant of God's righteousness, which is a righteousness by faith a righteousness that one receives through true repentance and trust in God's provision for forgiveness. That's always been through blood atonement. Isn't it amazing how that um, religious people, God bless you, we love, we love everybody, but listen, there's dangers here. Uh, sometimes religious people, they stray completely away from God's plan of salvation. If you don't preach and teach the blood of Jesus Christ, you've already departed from God's salvation. My friends, Jesus looked at that crowd and he said, you are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father, ye will do. And when he spoke those words, he wasn't preaching to the publicans and the sinners. He was looking at the church crowd, the folks that would meet with him down at synagogue on Saturdays. Come on. If you're awake, give me an amen. amen. All right. So. Here's where I'm going with this thought. My friends, we were all once held as slaves under the power of darkness until the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ led us to a place of humble repentance. Can you remember that? Amen. When you came to a place of decision about Christ, when in fact you did receive the Lord Jesus. It's not complicated. 
And uh, the Bible does not require you to have the same emotional response to the gospel. Some people can be quite stoic, quite businesslike when they receive Christ, but they mean business and they get a new heart. Some people might weep like a baby when they give their heart to Jesus, and they too mean business. And God looks at the heart. And I tell you what, the more you understand your salvation, uh, you might get happy. You might have to do some crying. You might have to do some shouting. You might have to do some dancing in the street. Hey, we know that humble place of repentance. Today, those who know Christ give, can give thanks to the Father that they are delivered from the power of darkness. Do you understand that today? We are no longer held in bondage to death. Satan's power to rule over us and drag us down to hell is forever broken. That is cause for great thanksgiving and praise to God. I receive that today. Look at this. Giving thanks unto the Father uh, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. You were just singing about it earlier. Free, free. Thank God I'm free. I'm not a slave to Satan and to sin. He has no power to rule over me through the power of sin and drag me down to hell. Because that power was broken at the cross where Christ died in my stead, where Christ bore my sin and shame, where Christ once and for all settled God's wrath against the sin of the world. And through the power of what Christ has done, he has destroyed him who had the power of death. That is the devil. He has destroyed that authority. Those who call upon the Lord Jesus Christ will be delivered. Praise God. This is cause for great thanksgiving. Oh, thank you, Father, for making me suitable for your heaven. Thank you, Father, for delivering me from the power of darkness. Now look at this next point. We're not done. Verse 13, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. There's our next spiritual blessing. We give thanks to the Father because we are now translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Folks, listen to me. Salvation is something that happens now. It's not something that happens after you die. You better be saved before you die, because if you're unsaved when you die, you're lost forever. When we receive Christ as our Savior, Jesus says we pass from death unto life. That's now. He says those who believe on, on him have everlasting life. That's now. Look at what we're giving thanks for. We have been made fit. We are delivered from the power of darkness. We are now translated into the kingdom of his dear son. That transition has already occurred. I'm already in the kingdom of my heavenly father. Spiritually speaking, we entered the kingdom when we were born again. Now, that's what you need to understand as Bible believing Christians. Have you been born again? When you're born from above, you are translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Well, praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. And I'll tell you what I get excited about here. When you think about it, being a part of the kingdom of God, uh, I know that God has granted me a place at his table. <laughs> I love to think of it like that. Praise the Lord. Hey, Jesus talks about this. We're going to dine with the Savior in the kingdom. We got a place at his table today. Now, I'm going to tell you something, saints. You had better give your mind and your hearts to the truth of your salvation, or you're not going to be a happy Christian. As the world keeps getting darker and the world keeps falling apart, and... Um, we have all kinds of problems we could speak to. Well, where's your heart? Where are you going to find a place of thanksgiving? My heart's full of thanksgiving because my heart's full of the victory I have in Jesus. And nothing that's happening in this world can change the victory I have in Jesus. While this world could persecute me even unto the death. 
And uh, as I leave here, maybe like Stephen, the first martyr of the church, perhaps the Lord will just pull back the veil and let us see right into his heaven. Let me tell you something. You can't defeat a child of God. You might persecute us unto the death, but my friends, we've got the victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I got news for you. That kingdom that we're a part of, spiritually speaking today, that kingdom's coming to planet Earth. And one day, we're coming back with King Jesus to rule and reign with him. Does anybody understand what I'm talking about. Hey, man. No, sir, I'll be counting my blessings. And the more I meditate on it, just like this sermon, I start preaching. The next thing you know, I'm feeling real good. And you'll feel a whole lot better about everything in your life when you get your mind fixed on Christ. And before long, the joy of the Lord will just be filling your heart. And thanksgiving will be coming out of your mouth. You'll be praising your Lord. Well, we give thanks that we've been translated in that kingdom. And uh, we're thankful uh, that we have redemption through his blood. There's your next point, in whom we have redemption through his blood. We've been bought with a price. Surely, you don't let your feelings play with you, do you? You don't feel saved? What, what's that got to do with your salvation? It doesn't have anything to do with your salvation. When I was saved by the marvelous grace of God, I was redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I am purchased. That's what the word redeemed means. I've been bought back. You're his purchased possession. You belong to him. How glorious this is. And then the apostle just kind of puts a, a bow on that package. And he says, even the forgiveness of sins. <laughs> Praise your name, Father. Did you know your heavenly Father holds nothing against you today? When he forgives, he releases you from the guilt. He deals with us as with sons and daughters. We're living on the other side of the cross. We're risen in Christ. Do you understand what I'm trying to preach to you? You know, it's getting awful quiet in here. Are you folks awake today? I know you're in deep contemplation. That's what it is. You're thinking about what we're saying. Well, listen, um, we're on the other side of the cross. We are forgiven. God doesn't deal with us as condemned lost sinners. That's not what we are. We're now risen in Christ. We are his saints. We are his saints. We are his saints. We are preserved in Christ Jesus. That's who we are. We are forgiven. If I was still on trial, that wouldn't speak much about forgiveness, would it? Thank God for these spiritual blessings today. These are the things that ought to fill your heart to overflowing. I'm going to ask you to stand. I'm going to ask our team to come, and we're going to worship and I'll give an invitation in a moment. And as we stand together, just think about these blessings. Give thanks to the Father. Give thanks to the Father. He's made you suitable for his heaven. Give thanks to the Father. He's delivered you from the power of darkness. Give thanks to the Father. He's translated you into the kingdom of his dear son. Give thanks to the Father. He's redeemed you. You are his purchased possession. Give thanks to the Father. You are forgiven and you're released from your guilt. God doesn't deal with you as a condemned lost sinner. You are one of his saints. Amen. 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 Hey, won't you just say that out loud? Amen. Just say, I am a saint. Amen. 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 Say it a little louder. I am a saint. Amen. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Set apart in Christ. Let's sing and worship the Lord.
for every spiritual blessing that we possess in Christ today. We give you thanks. We thank you, Father, that the death of Christ, his burial, and his resurrection, that's our victory. He is our victory. Father, we trust him. We confess him. Lord, our eyes are fixed upon Jesus. He's our hope of heaven. And Father, you know our hearts today. We want to please you. We want to honor you. We want to grow. We want to learn. But Lord, we must live at the foot of the cross. That's where our life began. That's where, Lord, we have the victory. Thank you, Father. Teach us. Help us to understand. And Lord, fill us with the victory that's ours in Jesus. Equip us, Lord, in this hour to stand witness to be a light help us to carry the good news to others help us to bear testimony lord sharing with others what christ has done for us bless us lord thank you father our heads are bowed we're praying for just a moment are you saved today do you know christ as your savior today Perhaps you're in this building, you say, Brother Ross, I'm not, I'm not saved. You know, I believe that the Holy Spirit, according to Scripture, He deals with our heart. And when we lift up Jesus, He draws men to Christ. see your need for the Lord Jesus? Do you desire to be saved? God's dealing with you. It has been a blessing for us to worship together at this time, and we invite you to come worship with us. CBM is located 3809 Maple Avenue in Castalia, easily accessible from State Route 2. Take Route 2 to State Route 101 South and turn left onto Maple Avenue. We would love to have you visit. And don't forget, it's your prayers and gifts of love that bring this program into your home each week. Send your gifts of support, prayer requests, and comments to CBM, Box 247, Castalia, Ohio, 44824. CBM Worship is a production and presentation of Christian Broadcasting Ministries. CBM, proclaiming the word.